Sound on Sound and we're on the Universal Audio booth at Summer Nam in Nashville with James. So James, you've got the Ox. What is the Ox? What is the Ox? So we're calling it Ox the Amp Top Box. And we're hoping, and I, you know, I feel it, it's a box that lets you get all the tone out of your tube amp, any volume, anywhere, anytime, whether you're playing it, recording it, practicing writing songs, it's what we feel is like the ultimate little box to get everything out of that amp you have. And, and so I guess next thing, well, how, how are we doing that? <laughs> it's the, the long uh, answer to that is if we look at the box, actually, you'll see these kind of two colors on it. And so if we just concentrate on this side, you'll see we have a headphone out, which I'm listening to, line out, which would be, you know, you could send that to like your favorite recording interface, any kind of DAW. But the important one here is this. This is a, a what we spent a few years working on was something we felt was like the best attenuation load box you could design. And it was really purpose built for us to do amp modeling. Because we like to kind of take pieces of the amp and look at it in isolation. But once you unhook a speaker, you can't just put like a, a passive resistor on it because the amp doesn't react anymore the same way as it does with a speaker. So we had had to design this load that literally looked like a vintage Jensen speaker back in the, when we started this. And then we took that and said, okay, well, we should put that in the box. So this really does look like a speaker to the amp. And how are you doing that in terms of impedance curves and stuff? Because this is a, a complaint with certain attenuation boxes like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's not responsive it, yeah, the, in the right way, at least. Uh, the main thing is that it, it, what we're calling it's a reactive load. And, and that those are two terms that get tossed around is, is it passive or reactive load? And for us, the reactive load part of it means that, you know, when everyone looks at their amp and you set your cab to eight ohms, your head's at eight ohms, but it never really is that, because as you play it, the impedance is moving around and the speaker's getting hotter and it's changing the sound. So this had to look like, like that swinging impedance and all that stuff that you get off a speaker. So it's a, a custom built reactive load that we did internally that is all sitting here. So we can, using these number system here, you see zero means off, but we have five other sort of tweaked levels that lets you bring the amp back. So I can just put the amp on 10 and maybe put the speaker on two and the amp is, of course, in front of us. What we're hearing in here is a whole different story, which I'll, I'll show you. But so at any time you've got this great sound of the amp and all these workable volumes, which would be, you know, sort of bedroom level, home studio level, recording studio level stuff. So I can set this amp any way I want. Because I think in a perfect world, we'd all have this giant tracking room and you want distortion, you put your Marshall on 10 and that's your distortion sound, but it's not realistic for most of us. But this will let you do that. So if we jump over here, the important thing is, you know, this is always happening in the analog world. And then we come over here and you'll see this rig in this room. So in the headphones or the line outs, we can just turn off the speaker and what we're gonna hear in here comes off of this Wi-Fi iPad. So there's no computer hooked up to it. There's no software running on your, your Mac or any of that stuff. It's all contained in the box. The box is standalone. And if we Wi-Fi in, then we get to see the sort of studio world of the cabinets, the mic locker, plate reverbs, you know, the actual room modeling. So if I play something, I can play something if that's easier to That'd be great, let's hear it. So I'm gonna go over here and move the rig to one. And if you see, the screen actually moves, so we're playing through a vintage tweet amp with an old blue speaker in it. But I can make this amp sound completely different and maybe go to something champ size. You can see the mics change, and so I've got a 414, a 421. And it got roomier sounding. I can go one more. And now I'm in a 212, that's kind of the silver bulldog, mid 60s era speakers. So the, oh, sorry, go ahead. So that's uh, in DSP then, it's doing that. That is in, that is in DSP. Um, and the one thing that separates this is that it is a completely dynamic model. 
And when we say like dynamic speaker modeling and dynamic room modeling is the speakers, not only is your amp seeing this sort of impedance thing happening and it's moving with the analog side, the digital side is also representing all the other stuff the speaker would have been doing. So on this side, in the, in the digital world, that model is actually getting hotter and it's thermally changing from where we're playing it. And you start getting the cone cry effects and all these other fun things that happen when a speaker sort of out at limits. And you can see it's just a single knob here. So I can put that on all the way up and that's basically me hitting that speaker way too hard. And I'll start to get this effect where you get sort of these sub octave notes, the cone cry notes. You hear it. There's actually an octave note under that. But not there. So each speaker has this phenomenon where they all have these resonating notes that come out when you hit them too hard. And what's the latency like on this then? Latency is about 2.7, 2.8. If you want to do the full you know, analog outputs, uh, it goes down to about 2.2. We have SPDIF uh, optical on the back, so if you just do that into your, your DAW, your, uh, your sort of stuff, you get 2.2-ish, I think, if you do the digital outs. But Okay, so you're taking then the output from your tube amp, plugging it into this. Plugging into this. And then you can listen to it at, at yeah. with studio quality at home. Yeah, put it in whatever DAW you're using. It's, cool. it's, it's, it's not a um, part of another rig. This is really just a standalone box, and then you can say listen to the speaker if you want all the studio processing. Take the line out, use the headphones, take an optical out to a, another larger rig in the studio. And the, the, But the other thing, too, was to make sure on top of the speaker modeling that we actually gave you a full studio modeling. So if I like, if I solo the room here, the cool thing is we sound like we're actually in that room with these speakers. So that. And then in the studio world, we also have these master effects. So if you can see on the screen, I don't know if you can actually see that. Yep. You can see we can pull up a plate reverb. It'll take a second here. Turn on plate. Then I can turn off the amp reverb and sound more. Now we have the stereo image of a mic, you know, going through a console using a studio plate and stereo. And so what you end up with at, at the end of all of this is what we feel is like a master record quality sound, but just from the box. So you can kind of do with it whatever you want after that. Cool. Um, also, with the speaker volume, this is just the volume going to the actual right. speaker, so you have an output again from yeah. this, so it, it sits in the chain, does it? Yeah, and that, that, that's a unique thing, because most attenuators either shut the amp off completely, or they're just stepped attenuation. And the thing for, for most players, if you're recording, and you're sitting next to the amp, even if it's shut off, there's a sort of disconnected feel. Like It always feels good to put even just a little bit of the amp back, so you can, you can get more sustaining off the cabinet, just a little bit of rumble, and it's, because it, 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 when you're in headphones, there is that sort of feel like you're missing something. Because you can hear it, but it's always nice to pull a little in that. And uh, it's one of those things that made me as a guitar player feel better. You yeah, know? sure. OK, so how much is this going to cost then? And when will it be available? OK, so it's going to be around $12.99 US street price. And we're, we're looking for this winner. Okay. James, play us out. All right.